Hi kids, welcome to a new weekly science lab video. On this occasion, we are going to focus on the relationship between materials and forces applied to them, in particular, deformation forces. If we look at the deformation forces, that is, the forces that, when applied to a certain material, tend to modify the shape of it, we can establish the following categories. Elastic materials, those materials that, when subjected to a deformation force, do indeed deform, but recover their shape totally or partially once the force stops acting. Plastic materials, those materials that, when subjected to deformation forces, do indeed deform, but do not recover their original shape once the force stops acting, rather they remain deformed and rigid materials, those materials that, when subjected to deformation forces, do not deform at first, but maintain their shape all the time, unless the intensity of the deformation force is such that the material ends up giving way, breaking. Two aspects should be noted here. Rigid materials are therefore often more fragile while deformable materials such as elastic or plastic ones generally preserve their integrity better under such forces. And second, there are materials that we would describe as rigid but which, when exposed to deformation forces for very long periods of time, will display plastic behavior, as shown for example by plywood shelves on which the weight of the objects placed on is support or by rocks on a geological fold. In this regard, it is important to talk about Robert Hooke and his law of elasticity. Robert Hooke was a prolific British scientist who addressed various fields of science such as physics, astronomy, paleontology, and above all, pioneered microscopy. He coined the term cell to refer to the structural and functional unit of living beings and made numerous extremely accurate illustrations of insects and small parts of plants observed under the newly invented microscope improved by himself. He was a contemporary of Newton, although unfortunately they became bitter enemies due to their absurd rivalry for their intellectual superiority. Within his studies in physics, Hooke established his law of elasticity, which states as the extension of a spring, so the force applied upon it. It means that the force needed to extend or compress a spring for any distance is directly proportional to that distance. In other words, the greater the force applied to the string, the more it will be deformed. The greater the force, the longer the spring will be. This proportion between length of the spring and the intensity of the force applied to it is always constant, this value being the so-called spring elasticity constant. Each spring has its own elasticity constant depending on the material it is made of, on the size, etc. It seems easy to understand, doesn't it? Let's put it to test. Roll up your sleeves, for it is experiment time. We are going to need a spring. We can easily find one inside many pens. Objects of known weight. Make sure they are of a weight suitable for the spring. Rope or thread to hang the spring and objects. A ruler and paper and a pencil. Simply hang the spring from one end somewhere it can swing from such as a door handle, measure the length of the spring before you hang anything from it, and now, at the other end, hang the objects one by one and measure, in each case, the new length of the spring. In case you happen to have any trouble finding a spring, you can just use the simulation I am attaching to this task. In any case, note down each measurement on a chart, matching the weight of the hanged object with the length of the spring. Remember that weight and mass are not the same thing, but they are easily interchangeable parameters. 
Just multiply the mass of each object times 9.8 meters per square second which is the acceleration due to the gravitational force of the Earth. The result of this multiplication is given in Newtons. In an additional column, write the result of dividing each weight by the corresponding length. As you can see, those divisions give a number that is roughly the same all the time. To finish, calculate the average of all those divisions and voila, you have just found out what is your spring's elasticity constant. I hope you like this activity. See you!